We're going to talk a little bit about the uh, new album coming up with uh, the Lucid. That's coming out next week, right? Yeah, I think uh, due out on um, the 15th. Yeah, just a little over a week, I guess. Yeah, awesome. All right. Um, so I know you've been uh, the lead singer of Sponge for like almost 30 years, right? And uh, you've got a y'all got a brand new album out. So why did you decide to, you know, get up with a bunch of guys and form a group called The Lucid? Huh. Well, all started with like a very simple email and not an email directly to me. It was an email uh, sent to the spongetheband.com website. And of course, many of those emails are forwarded through to me. And um, I saw this uh, one particular email about uh, collaborating on some songs. And uh, I'm going, well, it's not coming through my agents and it's not coming through my manager because we don't have a manager. But um, I was like, well, I don't know, send me a song. And then the fella emailed me back. He goes, ah, it sounds too much like Sponge. Maybe we'll just forget about it. And I go, send me a song. So they sent me a song, you know, uh, a, a demo with no vocals on it and began to explain who was involved in the group. And I, I was like, uh, oh, this is interesting. I go, okay, well, you know, here, I, I uh, wrote some stuff and, and recorded it and sent it back to them, their demo with the vocals on it. Okay. Yeah. And you didn't know who it was, though. Didn't know initially anything about it, man. I was, and it's weird because you go, if I wanted to write with Dirks Bentley or I wanted to write with, uh, you know, Metallica, right. um, I think I'd probably go to their publisher or their manager or something like that. I guess that's a normal yeah. protocol, right? But you, yeah. Email, email the band's website. Go, hey, you want to write some songs? You know, I go, you know, I almost didn't respond. <laughs> And honestly, I go, I go, I, I stop and think about it. I go, would I respond like that to just anybody? Yeah. I don't, maybe, I don't know. Okay. So can I, can, can I send a few songs and, and to that address and, and, and uh, see what you say about it? <laughs> I mean, it, it worked once. Then, yeah, then right. <laughs> hey, if you get this weird email, I'm just saying, you never know. You're right. Wow, that that's pretty cool. So what happened after that? So you, so you record some vocals and then what happened yeah i the first thing that they sent me was this single that uh is currently released the, the, so we've released three singles uh so far i guess i'm jumping ahead a little bit but the single that's out right now which is called hair and um i was being kind of irreverent in in the vocal you know i'm going well you know what this song just makes me think of hair. So it's going to be like, uh, I was never there to hold your hair. Yeah. And that's the course of the tune. And I'm like, take it or leave it, you know? And it turned out pretty cool. <laughs> and so the fellas started sending me more songs in different, uh, you know, different stages of completion, right. I guess. And, and, and in total, I guess there were over 30 songs uh, or ideas that the boys had sent me. And we whittled it down to about 13 that we really recorded you know top notch and uh, nine ended up on the record wow so but you you eventually found out who those those guys were right so yeah, yeah i mean that at that but you know it's funny it's just like it all has to do with the music and yeah. if the music is cool i go that's everything and yeah. then to find out who's involved i go that's even that's icing on the cake, man. You know, that that's just dynamite. But bottom line, if the music is cool, everything is sunny in my day. That's how I look at it. Yeah. And I guess it helps if it's uh, David Ellison and Drew Fortier and Mike Heller, right, helping out, right? You know what? Just a fantastic talent, fantastic guys. And uh, you know, those guys just uh, had so much you know vision and so many great ideas put together and uh it was just a matter of me coming in and doing my thing but if it wasn't cool like i could do nothing with it honestly right i mean really i couldn't do anything with it. i would just sit there uh with a bank a blank sheet of paper and a, a pencil and 
it wouldn't resonate with me and we wouldn't have anything to talk about so that's right and well, there's there's a lot of talent in those guys and you and, and the sound you know i know there's a bunch of different styles so how would you describe your sound with this album i i do believe that mike heller when he was uh shopping it around to different labels and we there were many labels he shopped it to and at the time that he was shopping it nobody was interested in like a project band they wanted a real band you know they wanted like a band that was going to go out and 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 do dates and that type of thing and of course um david was ramping up a uh, tour and a new record with megadeth so it, it wasn't in the cards but the funny thing was was the description or people talking about a heavier sounding band a more metal type of band with a 90s vocalist so i guess that's how i would sum it up and they felt that uh, it was it was different in that regard it was that metal thing that's going on with uh fear factory and uh, on some level megadeth but with 90s vocals right and it works i mean i've listened to the the three singles and it really works the the uh which the three singles uh maggot wind damned and hair i mean like you said hair was just released and i noticed the sounds of each song i think you know i'm just kind of paying attention you know i know a lot of the fans are listening and you know and i know maggot wind to me kind of sounds sounds like uh stone temple pilots and i think damned to me sounds like megadeth and hair sounds like alice in chains are you getting that from people because <laughs> that's what i thought you know it's funny when i think about it you know, I kind I I get that. I get those descriptions, man. You know, I get, I get where um, people would associate those those groups, and and um, it, it's kind of fun to to steer things unintentionally in different ways or spin it in different ways. I because at the end of the day, I'm just reacting to a guitar riff or a band track in a very natural way. So it, it, it you know certainly is innocent. I we don't intend it to be that way, but you know people make their associations. Those are all very good associations, by the way. I go dynamite. And and uh, and you you've played with some of those guys like from Allison Chains before, so it so that kind of makes sense, I guess, right? To to kind of oh like man, that. yeah. In the uh, the uh, Spies for Darwin group, that was uh, uh Mike Inez and. Um, Sean Kenny uh, from Alice in Chains, that band, and you know, of course, we've done dates together though too. You know, we've gone out there. Sponge has been uh, has, has, has done uh, several dates with Alice in Chains over the years. So, yeah, good dudes. So, does that come out in? I mean, is there when you try to do like a demo? If you're if you're doing something else besides Sponge, I know the Sponge sound is already going to come out because that's who you are, right? But do you try to purposely? change it up like on this album did you try to make it sound different because you didn't want to sound like sponge uh, oddly enough i think i was going back to some of the early sponge vocal uh approaches you know really kind of hard harder edge even on the Sp- new sponge record lavatorium i'm not hitting it like i'm hitting it with um the lucid you know so it was almost in some regard, a throwback to the old Sponge vocal style. There might be one or two tracks on the new Sponge record that that that, that kind of gravitate towards the early Sponge style, but the Lucid, I think, I drew from the earlier Sponge thing. Okay. Um, and what are some of the uh, what's some of the uh, meanings of the song? The the three singles you've got out. What what's some of the stories behind those songs, and what's the inspiration to those songs? Well, Maggot Wind, you know, just the idea of the smell of, um, I don't know, necessarily maggots, but the smell of death or rotting. Yeah. And that idea with everything that's going on in the world, and you can believe what you want, but I think some folks have blindly believed, you know, and I think yeah. there's, there's a real danger in blind belief, and that is total, like, right out of the gate, you know. Right. Uh, regarding the uh, first verse of maggot wind you know um uh, oh, man i'm trying to think of it man <laughs> uh you know it, it there's a reference to uh jonestown and yeah. of course we're not 
speaking about Jonestown is kind of a, a metaphor, place that kind of puts a touchstone as far as where that song goes. And that is the essence of Maggot Wind. Damned is, you know, damned if you do and damned if you don't. It doesn't even matter if you're rich. It doesn't matter if you're broke. That That's the essence of that tune. And hair, we, we've all been, you know, just extremely disappointed and alone. And um, there's been nobody there. And sometimes you, you can be the fault of somebody's um, distress. And um, that, that's exactly what hair is about. Right. And uh, so are we going to be able to, uh, you know, are the fans going to, uh, I don't know, kind of relate to this album as a whole? Is, are there going to be songs kind of similar to this, kind of in that same kind of vein, maybe of meaning and sound? Is it going to be like, you know, I don't know, are they going to look at it kind of like, you know, walk away from it like with a message or something like that? I would think. The neat thing about, or the cool thing I always felt about music going way back, and when you had an Aerosmith record, you had Get Your Wings, or you had Rocks. Right. You might be listening to the songs on the radio, but then there's all those other tunes that you're just like, oh my God, I'm listening to every song on the record. And that's what I think this Lucid record is going to be like for folks. Go to radio maybe with hair. That's what I heard we're going to do. However, I think people are going to listen to every song on the record. Yeah. And honestly, I don't. There's nothing on this record. Again, I think there was thirty some thirty something ideas that we had, but you know it was whittled down. There's no fluff on the record, you know. Right. And the cool thing is, listening to some of the great rock bands of all ages, you can certainly literally take hopefully some meaning away that the artist intended. However, a lot of folks fill in their own blanks about what they yeah. think about the tune or what the song means to them. So mm -hmm. to me, this record is a complete throwback to like the great rock bands of, you know, the seventies, those, those, and it's not a single oriented project. It mm -hmm. is a record of hopefully songs that'll stick around and stick in people's heads for a long, long time. And that's why it's been so cool. No label was sitting there going, you got to make a song like this or you got to make a song like that. It was just a bunch of guys going, what sounds cool to us? Not trying to be cool, but what is cool to us? And that's what it was. Yeah. And that's probably why so many of the fans are going to really appreciate it because of that very reason that it's not going to sound like it was forced or you were pressured to make this, you know, poppy kind of sound you just did what you wanted to do and and when people right. yeah can re relate to it you know stuff like that there was nobody going hey man i got a bunch of money and uh would you record and all this kind of crap it had nothing to do with anything other than shit that's cool <laughs> yeah. let's do another one right. you know that that's it it's got it, it's got a lot of energy the songs i've heard so far i mean you know and if you could say uh, you know, if the songs got better and better, let's just say this this album's just going to be, you know, spectacular. You know, because I mean, I think though the sound of everything mixed together is perfect. I mean, I think with your vocals and everybody playing together, it's it's got a really good sound. Um, well, Mike know. Haller, you know, really was a quarterback as far as like the overall like ringleader, you know, north star guiding everybody into what we should be doing and uh he was he just did a fantastic job and uh, his pal lassie lamert i can't say his name <laughs> very well uh mixed the whole thing so between mike and, and you know honing everything in or reining everything in and La La lasse i can't even say his name sorry i apologize in advance but um yeah they just killed it awesome um and is there like a song that you relate to the most and, and maybe is your favorite from the album? I know it's hard to say, but is there something that really sticks in your mind that you go, I just can't get away from this song. This is, this is my song. Is there one of those? Yeah, I, I was, yeah, for sure, man. And it might not be everybody's, you know, who knows? But to me it was, um, we did a song called uh, breach boy. 
and uh, you know, Bre- I think of Breach Boy. I go, man, it could be a great um, Marvel comic character. Yeah. But the idea of being born Breach, you're just kind of screwed from the beginning. Yeah. And that's the first line, man, right out of the gate. And that's him screwed from the beginning. You know, it's like Breach Boy. And um, you know, in some regard, autobiographical. Of course, I wasn't born Breach, but I mean, born into this world that we're in and growing up in Detroit and the challenges of all of that to me that song just uh, resonated with me and you know, to sit and be completely autobiographical isn't necessary but I just go you know what to talk about it and uh, maybe using some metaphors was a cool way to approach it so probably Breach Boy well yeah well that's cool I, and everybody be listening out for that song and uh, I know a lot of people though when they're listening to music like that especially the, the music that really you know, touches them they relate to the words and they relate to the music so i, I think that's always a, a special thing for for music you know when it really hits home with everybody you know and i'm pretty sure there's a lot of people out there that can relate to these songs so most of the songs are these relatable type songs about like you said maybe autobiographical or maybe or, or things like that or are these songs kind of about your life or, or some things that you went through Absolutely, but not you know, it, it, not in a not in a complete literal way. Yeah, it, it's not necessary, man. I mean, I can I can write those songs. I've written those songs, in which you know I I look back at the old sponge days of sounds like drowning or raining and things like that. You know, those very very uh, um, not metaphorical, very personal. But Breach Boy maybe it's a more um, uh, grown uh, a grown way of. Uh, writing uh, from that perspective and i like that you know breach boy man it's, it's something that those words are different words you know they're who's what's breach boy you know and mm-hmm. i don't know if anybody's ever said breach boy before you know or use breach boy in a song so i just go breach boy yep that's cool could be the next tattoo i don't know hey there you go <laughs> I, I you might start something hey breach boy I, I can see the single now i can see the uh the album cover and and speaking of which uh pretty cool album cover you got there for the upcoming album it's uh what's the story behind that what does that mean wow man so i i mean it's it's i think it just started with the whole idea initially of like maggot win with like the whole jonestown thing and um you know people i i know we were talking about kool-aid and people drinking kool-aid but i think it it kind of morphed into this idea about um a, a, a little what people would think is a party like atmosphere and um the shit's ready to hit the fan nobody knows it really uh mm-hmm. the guy blindfolded has no idea but the people on the cover know it's going down but they probably showed up for a party but this kid's going to hit this pinata which is not a pinata it's a bomb yeah. you know what i mean so right. i think that when i look back there were so many discussions about the cover and all that kind of stuff I mean, many discussions about it. I think it had to, its start with Maggot when the song, and then it just moved forward from there. And that you know, and that's a that makes a statement, I guess, for itself. And I guess that summarizes probably a lot of what you're trying to say on the whole album, right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Just certainly, some soulful intent with most everything that I think we've we've done, which. Um, not easy to do. Yeah, and I th- I think though in in those songs like you're talking about the Maggot Wind song and and with that idea, I know people will take it this way, they'll take it that way, you know. In these days, you know, you got people, you know, with different views on life and different views about political whatever, you know, and it kind of separates people. But at least with some of this, people kind of can agree together that we going through some rough times and. We're like a, a, you know, just a step away from screwing up everything in, in different regards, regardless of whatever political side you're on, stuff like that, right? We're just kind of going the wrong way, I guess you could say, right? I think it's a wonderful point to bring up. I, I, I agree 1,000% because, make no mistake, in, in a song like Maggot, when we're not pointing a finger at anybody in particular, we're probably pointing a finger at fingers at everybody yeah because that's that's where we've gone you know so i i just go i couldn't agree with you more i think that we've gone this is what the music does hopefully hopefully the music brings us together in a way we're finding 
that we have more in common yeah. than we have uh, not in common. And that that's the hope. That's the one thing that we got that we can bring people in a room together, feeling something, some, feeling something, you know, good about music. And if we can do that, that to me, we've accomplished something big. And, and, and I go, what, what, what could be better? That's, that's true. That, I mean, yeah, what more can you say? I mean, that, that summarizes the whole hope for everybody that, and music always brings people together. You know, if you don't have music, what do you have? You know, and that's a, that's a strong statement. Um, but that's why we've always done what we do, even in the early Sponge days. You know, we recorded our first record with no, there was no record deal at the time. Right. Before a label even got involved, you know, half of the record was done on our own dime, you know. And this record, there was nobody going, well, you know, uh, we got to have money to make a record, so let's try to get some money. Nobody even talked about money. Right. That, that's a big difference. You know, I, I've been thinking about that lately, too, is you know, these days you don't make a whole lot of money on, you know, record sales and things like that. And, you know, you get a penny, a stream or something, you know, it's just crazy. So, you know, and, and if you're talking to the fans out there, you know, you, then I want to tell them, to, you know, too, that when guys like you make these records, you're doing it for them, you know, you're doing it for your enjoyment, but you're doing it for them to be happy too, because it ain't like you're making a killing doing these. Songs. No, we're not. But that's what we've always done, right? And it's a always record. exactly. You make a record. You, you, we, we, I mean, Sponge has had one our ninth studio record. Three of them, you know, I, there, there was like a few of them were made with a, you know, like a major label. But everything else was either done with, uh, you know, cool indie labels or on our own dime. So it's just, you know, we're gonna make records. I, I'm, I'm making music despite it. I, you know, I always like what. Buzz from the Melvins. We toured with the Melvins on uh, in Lollapalooza in 1996, and um, you know Sponge played right after the Melvins on the second stage. And I was sitting watching them all the time. And uh, the Melvins came to St. Andrews Hall in Detroit some, somewhere in the late 90s. You know, it's the last time I saw Buzz. But he sat down and he said to me, "He goes, Vin, if I can make one record and tour every year and and make a modest living doing that, I'm going to do it." every year year in year out you know what i mean right. and i think if any of us that play music can do that make a record tour make a some kind of modest living i think it nothing could be better you know i i go that's that's just dynamite man you know to keep doing what we do that's it and you know and you've been doing it for a long time and and may you keep doing that and uh and what about the future of uh i, I know you, the album's not out yet but is is this just a one shot or is it going to keep going with the lucid? Well, I guess, uh, I, I think it's going to have some legs and it's going to, we're going to do some dates. Cause I think Ellison, he has us all getting fitted for like matching suits. So the lucid oh. is going to like show up in like matching suits everywhere. Okay. <laughs> like, like I'm kidding, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was sitting there going, whatever, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love the romantic. You like the romantic. I was I was thinking of no, it was like like the Van Halen video with the hot for teacher when they're wearing the uh, the same suits and they're dancing and yeah, kind of jazzy looking. But yeah, that that would be cool. Hey, I don't care what you wear, man. Just show up and play the music, right? <laughs> uh, I thought I'd throw that out there. That was good. You got me on that. I, I was sitting there going, I'm I'm not going to say anything about that. Um. Uh, yeah, well, well, if you get, if you get some dates lined up, I guess we'll be hearing about all that and seeing what happens. And uh, I do expect some big things from this album and this band because it sounds great, man. Uh, well, thank you, thank you, Gary. You know, I go, we, I enjoyed making the the record, really did, man. You know, and we thought it might have been dead in the water for a minute, but you know what? Here it is now, and I go, I couldn't be happier. I think it's just a killer record. I'm excited about people hearing it and enjoying it and seeing what happens well i appreciate you uh talking to me today and like i said looking forward to the music and i know everybody's gonna be happy when it comes out they're already happy and excited and uh but thanks for uh talking to me today man well good to talk to you gary i appreciate it thank you all right take care of you you too all right, bye